Our next stop along the volcanic legacy scenic byway is Klamath Falls. Not just pretty to look at, there is so much to see and do here. Home to the largest lake in Oregon, it's a bird lover's paradise and may have more bald eagles than any place in the country. Adding nostalgia to the downtown charm is the Raglan Theater, a gem from the 1940s. It was slated for demolition in the late 80s. It had kind of fell into disrepair. And, and Mr. Ross Raglan and a group of others got together and said, no, they wanted a performing arts theater in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Klamath Falls is a, a nice uh, town. It's got about 40,000 people. It's a quaint little town. It's casual. It's fun to visit. There's great places to eat. There's great theater. There's plenty to do. There's nature in the city. I just love living in Oregon. There's so much to do. The people are friendly and there's just an abundance of nature and activity that it's something for everyone. Come down and see it. A childhood dream turned into a lifetime achievement for philanthropist Gene Fable. Well, I think that when Mr. Fable put the museum together, he recognized that all people don't know everything about Indians. And so this has a lot of Indian artifacts from many cultures. And so he has uh, augmented that with artwork in order to help explain what these people were doing. Well, we have some ancient artifacts over 12,000 years old. It starts, I guess, about that time, and then it goes uh, all the way up until the settlers began coming in and the cavalry and settlement of the West. We're very proud of many things, actually, uh, with regard to the artifacts, because we have so many and such a variety. The one that Mr. Fable was most proud of was the opal arrowhead. It is a very small arrowhead, but beautifully flaked perfect, actually. I would doubt that there are very few museums in the United States who have the variety that we have here and the many cultures that are represented. Set amongst the towering Ponderosa Pines is the Collier Memorial State Park and Logging Museum. Here at Collier we've got a lot of machinery and the machinery that we have here really represents an evolution in logging. It really started back with horses and oxen. Early on they used a crosscut saw, they called it a misery whip oftentimes for good reason. They couldn't get very much volume out that way, and they were interested in moving, uh, in moving stuff a lot quicker. And so what they ended up doing was they started building more machinery. The museum that we have here and the, the artifacts that we have here really represent that evolution, that movement, that change from the, really the turn of the century up through probably about 1970. Logging is still considered uh, within the top three of the most dangerous jobs. They were tough people that lived back then. Not an easy lifestyle. They worked long, hard days. I think probably most of us couldn't handle it very well today. No, we had an easy lifestyle compared to the way they had it. Just a few minutes north of Klamath Falls on the banks of the Williamson River is Lonesome Duck, one of Oregon's premier fly fishing lodges. It's definitely unique in terms of what we have to offer. We have a couple miles of riverfront, we have a pond, we have the llamas, we have horses. So it's just an outdoor experience that a lot of people just don't get to have down in the city. Then pull it off the water and push it forward and push it forward. The cottages here come complete with their own practice pond and novices are welcome. My brother and Wendy certainly fit that description. They come up and the attitude is, please show us something that we can't do in our everyday life. They enjoy the peacefulness, the quiet, they enjoy the lifestyle of being out here on the river. I mean, it's really, uh, it's fulfilling in that way. To learn more about this bird watching mecca, we met with Cindy Diaz, local birding expert. The Klamath Basin is, according to Sunset Magazine, one of the top birding hotspots in the Northwest. We have over 350 birding species. We have uh, year-round birding. You can come up here and see almost anything any time of the year. Our peak migration times are during the fall and the spring. I can go out my back door and I might have six or seven species of birds right in my backyard. We have this incredible natural resource that I don't think a lot of people have. And you're not going to go out and see a hundred Ross's geese. You're going to go out and see tens of thousands of Ross's geese during peak migration seasons. I mean, you will never see so many birds flying in the air at one time. You're going to see bald eagles, red-tailed hawks, uh, northern harriers, uh, rough-legged hawks. You name it, we've got it. From green and lush, we transition to harsh, dry, and rocky yet still hauntingly beautiful. Well, my friend Jim at Klamath County promised diversity and he certainly delivered. This is Lava Beds National Monument where over about 500,000 years the lava erupted from the earth 
and then slowly withdrew, leaving what's called lava tubes. In fact, at last count, there are over 777, which are essentially caves. We're going to investigate one right now. Let's go into the icy depths of Skull Cave. Well, it's any time we don't know something, life is amazing. And that's part of the thing here is we've started to discover a lot more of the caves. Most of them are unimproved, so you have to look for them to be able to get into them. But we do have a large number of improved caves that you can go into as well. And they're still a mystery because they've been so unknown for so long, there could be things there that we don't even know about yet. And, you know, that's just amazing. Long ago, this harsh landscape was the home of the Modoc Indians and site of a fierce Indian war where a few Modocs, led by their chief, Captain Jack, held off an army for months by hiding in the caves. We're at the base of Skull Cave now, so named because years ago, the discoverers found skulls way down beneath the ice. They could see them glaring up through the ice. We're going to turn the lights out now and just see how dark it is. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, it's oh, my, oh my gosh! Okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was dark, all right. <laughs> and that makes our final stop. Wow. From wineries to waterfalls, from Shakespeare to an African safari, it's been quite an adventure. Well, we're on our way home from our first ever road trip on Great Getaways. I fell in love with the charm and the beauty of Southern Oregon. I love traveling with my family, and I'm so glad that you get to come along for the ride. We'll see you next time, somewhere around the world, and right here on Great Getaways. Great big Mulligan family thanks for our accommodations provided by the Plaza Inn and Suites in Ashland, Seven Feathers in the Land of Umpqua, and the Microtel Inn, Klamath Falls. Mm -hmm.